Ready to let everyone know all the details? All set. We're all set. Welcome to Rocky Mountain National Park. You just won't yep. believe it. You won't believe it. You'll think you're on a movie set. <laughs> If you are dreaming of coming to Rocky Mountain National Park, especially in the high season this summer, you must watch this entire video. There are special tickets and passes and all kinds of things that you need to know for 2023. And things have changed from previous years. So be sure to watch this whole video and you'll be all set for your trip to Rocky Mountain National Park in beautiful Colorado in 2023. Um, keep in mind, this is just Rocky Mountain National Park. There are other national parks that have their own way of entering. Uh, so don't assume this is what it's like in other ones. They're not all yeah. on the same page yet. So just a little bit of stats to set you up for why they're doing some of the things that they do. Because we get, I see a lot of people's posts that are like, oh no, I can't believe the good old days. We used to be able to go up there. Ah. Um, you just can't anymore. So it's awesome that they mm -hmm. love the outdoors. Yep, it is. But there's a lot of people that are loving the outdoors there's these a lot. days. Yeah. So let's give you a little bit of a background. Rocky Mountain National Park has 415 square miles, which is about a quarter of a million acres. And it has like mountains and meadows and uh, alpine lakes and just so many things to uh, discover. And there's 300 miles of hiking trails and all kinds of wildlife. If you've watched our videos here, you know how much wildlife <laughs> is up here. We'll talk about that. But that being said, only 300 miles of hiking trails is a lot when you consider how many people come to Rocky every year. In 2021, there was roughly 4.4 million visitors in 2021 alone. That's 12,000 a month. That's a yep. lot. We are loving our parks to death. We are trampling them. And the park system has to do something to mitigate that. We want the land to be uh, pristine and the animals to be unbothered. So that's why some of this is in place. Just as a little background, it, Rocky is huge, but a lot of it's wild country. Yeah. So the crowds are pretty much funneled into restricted areas. Yeah. So which is why you'll see a lot of people. Yeah. When you come to Rocky Mountain National Park, any time of the year, you will need a park pass. There are many different kinds. What do we have? The America the Beautiful? Like a lifetime pass? I've got the lifetime pass. Yeah. Lifetime senior pass. Lifetime yeah. senior pass. But there's day passes. Uh, there is seven day passes. And then there's all kinds of other passes. Uh, military. Um, oh gosh, I can't even remember all of them, but they're listed on the website. And I'm going to put a link to the website in the description too. But it's the NPS National Park Service. Search for Rocky. And all this information is there. Uh, and now the park passes, the overall park passes you need all year round, yep. you can actually get at the gate. When you're at the entry gate in your car, ready to ride into Rocky, you can buy them there and you can mm -hmm. buy them online. Uh, so they're pretty easy to get. And then if you last minute got yours, just make sure you screen cap your pass because you're gonna, it's gonna take a minute to mail to you uh, because there's not that much service. We'll talk about that too. Yeah. Service is spotty up here. Yeah. Yeah. At best. Um, but keep in mind, they only take credit or debit. Uh, do not bring cash. They, they'll turn you away. <laughs> no cash. No cash. Um, oh, here we go. Recreation.gov. You can get them. And the America the Beautiful Pass is at USGS. And we'll put all these links in the description too. So there's three places you can get passes. Recreation.gov, in person, and at USGS for the America the Beautiful. But there actually is five days a year you can get into the park for free. Yay! That's pretty cool, right? So Talk uh, about crowds, yes. There might be crowds. <laughs> uh, for 2023, it was January 16th, MLK birthday, April 22nd, uh, first day of National Parks Week, August 4th, anniversary of the Great American Outdoors Act, September 24th, National Public Lands Day, and November 11th, Veterans Day. Two of those days, you're going to need a second pass that we're going to talk about. I should say, too, there are four entrances to Rocky. The main ones, the well, the most crowded ones are right here out of Estes. We're about 10 minutes from Estes Park, Colorado. It's a town. And there's Fall River entrance and the Beaver Meadow entrance. And then if you go about a half hour south of here, there's uh, Wild Basin. 
And if you drive all the way over or you're coming from the West Slope, there is an entrance from Grand Lake, Colorado as well. So just the four, they have like the kiosk that you can uh, buy your pass at. Now you can get into the park at a few other places, uh, Lily Lake, Long's Peak, I think, and a couple of other places. And you will need passes, but you need to either buy those online or at a kiosk and have them available should they be uh, requested. Right, so here at Lily Lake, there's a parking lot, a couple parking lots, but there's not a ranger sta station. Um, so you can't just drive up here, there won't be a ranger to buy a ticket from, um, mm -hmm. but you can buy that, I think, at the visitor center. At the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you ways to get around timed entry tickets. Okay, so. I've got you, I got you. Now, for 2023, during the peak months, you will need a secondary ticket like you have in the last couple of years, and that is a timed entry ticket. The dates are different this year. They're being required now from May 26th through October 22nd are these timed entry tickets. That's the bulk of what we wanna to talk to you about today. And you need a timed entry ticket for every single day per vehicle, whether you're a motorcycle or a car. So it's not per person, it's per vehicle, which is pretty nice. Yeah. And one person in that vehicle needs a park pass. So when we come up, Steve has his park pass, I get us a timed entry ticket and we're good to go for the day. Now these are have a $2 fee. They say they're free, but with a $2 fee. So they're basically $2. The handling fee, fee. yeah. Yes. Huge point here, you cannot buy these at the gate. You can't buy these in person. You have to go to recreation.gov or call their number. You have to do that ahead of time and there's a lot to know about these timed entry tickets. Do not think you can just roll into the park between May 26th and October 22nd. Now, the change in those dates, Last year, in 2022, it was October 10th is when the timed entry tickets ended. And they realized the park was so crowded with the fall colors and, uh, you know, people mm -hmm. coming through because October was is beautiful too. I mean, yes. there's really no bad day in Rocky, right? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Um, that it was, it was too much. And so they've extended it another 12 days this year. So timed entry tickets go all the way to October 22nd, which is 12 days longer. So keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Uh, let's see. If you were trying to kind of get around the pass and come mid-October, it's not going to work. Now, there are a few exceptions to this timed entry ticket, and I'll tell you that after I give you some of these other details that you need to know. So there's two kinds of timed entry ticket. You will always need the park pass, right? In those summer months, you need a timed entry ticket. One of them... It, covers the Bear Lake Corridor. Bear Lake Corridor is really popular. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It has Bear Lake, uh, Sprague Lake, Moraine Park, and a whole bunch of hikes to go up to several different lakes. Just beautiful. Yes. Uh, so if you want to go to Bear Lake, you need a specific timed entry ticket for Bear Lake which is a longer entry hours. So you're required to have a ticket between 5 a.m. and 6 p.m., seven days a week during those days of the, the summertime through October. But if you don't care about Bear Lake Road mm -hmm. <laughs> and you just want to see the rest of the park, which includes Trail Ridge Road mm -hmm. and lots of other places, then you just need an, a rest of the park entrance. And that's only needed between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. Last year, it was all the way till three o'clock. Now they've reduced it. It's only nine to two, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yes. So that's really great. Now keep in mind, you need this to go over Trail Ridge Road. There isn't like, unless you have a commercial vehicle pass or a commercial pass, there's no special pass just to drive over. Um, you need this for Trail Ridge Road is all, also. Uh, Lumpy Ridge, Lily Lake here, Long's Peak, Wild Basin, East Inlet and North Inlet all require this timed entry tickets. Now, tickets are issued in two hour time blocks. So when I say the rest of the park, you need a timed entry ticket between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. What you'll do is you'll get a ticket for a two hour block. So the rest of the park would be 9 to 11 and 11 to 
something like that. One, yeah. yeah, I've got all the numbers right here in a second. Um, so it'll be two hour time block, but you must come in during your time block. Don't think you can get early morning and then mosey on in later. It does not work that way. They'll turn you away. So that's the rest of like Bear Lake though, <laughs> the 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. Definitely do not get a 5 a.m. pass unless you really plan on being here because it kind of takes it away from the people coming for the early hikes and the sunrise photos. Um, so really think about how your trip is gonna go and get the right time slot, but they're also two hour times and they will turn you away if you're not here during your time. Um, one note in here, a new thing, with the Bear Lake Corridor is people always ask, can I leave the park and come back? And usually you could, but Bear Lake is different now. So Bear Lake timed entry ticket, you can go in during your ticket time, but if you leave the Bear Lake Corridor, you have to wait until after two to go back in the corridor. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in the corridor, do everything you want to do in there or plan to just come back uh, right. after two. Yeah. So it's not, you don't have to wait till six, which is nice, uh, but you do have to wait till after two. Yeah. So that's now, new. The regular park time pass. Yeah, you, you can, can come still and go. come and go yeah. whenever you want. Yeah, so a really popular thing that I like doing is to drive all the way from Essis to over Trail Ridge Road down into Grand Lake. And I love that, but you're outside the park at that point. But if I have that timed entry ticket, I can get back in. That's, that's nice, mm, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, keep in mind, timed entry tickets, no refunds and no transfers. So you can't buy a ticket for someone else that's coming up here. And if you decide to cancel last minute, you don't get a refund. And then again, make sure you print it to put it in your dash if you're coming to somewhere like Lily Lake or anywhere that you're going to be away from your car and there's no ranger station. Um, and also screen cap your timed entry ticket because um, there's not that much service. So even at the park entrances, so the fall river entrance, there's really no cell service. So you need to have a screen cap of your timed entry or a printout. And so those two hour time blocks, I've got it here, Bear Lake, they start at five, right? So they're five to seven, oh, six to eight, eight to 10, 10 to 12, 12 to two, two to four and four to six. So there's an overlap in there. There's a five to seven and then a six to eight. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah that's really nice. Um, the everywhere else one is nine to 11, 11 to one and 12 to two. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so there's three time blocks during mm -hmm. the everywhere else pass. And it's funny because we all used to call it the everywhere else pass. And now the park service calls it the everywhere else timed <laughs> entry <laughs> ticket pass. Yeah, <laughs> so that's pretty okay. funny. Because after now that you know, okay, you need it between this time and this time, there's the Bear Lake corridor and there's the everywhere else corridor and two hour time blocks. When can you get these tickets? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm, it's not like, campgrounds where you can get them six months ahead. Not at all. You have to wait until the first day of the month before you want to go with May being the exception. So here you go. Here's some dates. At 8 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, Denver time, on May 1st, be online, get an account at recreation.gov and be online if you want to come into the park in the end of May through June. May 1st. If you're coming during those times and you want a timed entry ticket, be online, ready to go. They go on sale then and they'll stay on sale, but they typically sell out quickly. So May 1st will be that Memorial weekend and through, through the end of June. And then after that, it's the first. So the next batch of tickets will go on, on for sale on June 1st at 8 a.m. Mountain Time of July for July. So get online at June 1st at 8 a.m. for July tickets. Ju uh, July 1st, you get online for August tickets, right? So you have to be a month ahead of the game. Where this is really important <laughs> is the busiest time in the park, September. And I guess now October, really, depending on the yeah. weather. So if you plan on coming during elk rut or the fall colors, really make sure you try to get these timed entry tickets on August 1st for September and September 1st for October. That's really important. Uh-oh, there goes my script. Oh, no! <laughs> okay, what if you don't get a timed entry ticket? Are, are you missed? Did you miss out? But you still want to get in during those timed entry ticket times. 
guess what? Another new thing is they're holding back 40% of the tickets this year. So a lot more than last year. A lot more. Last year was 25 to 30%. This year, 40% of those of the capacity of timed entry tickets will be held back. And you can go online at recreation.gov at five o'clock the night before mountain time to get for the next day. And this works. This really yeah. works. So last year we had a day where we were available to go up in September for elk rut. There's actually a whole video about that here, um, watching the elk rut and where to see them. And we had a day that we didn't know we'd have. So we got online the night before to see if there's any timed entry tickets for the Bear Lake corridor, the very busy one. And we got one mm -hmm. because they held back plenty. Um, so- Was that for a weekend or a weekday? It might've been a weekday. Yeah. Yeah, but I think we might have done that twice. So you can get lucky. Weekdays are obviously, you know, less crowded. Uh, I don't know if that's obvious, but I'm letting you know weekdays are less, can be a little bit less crowded. But if you're disappointed, you get an extra day. Like, oh no, they're holding back 40%. Just be online at 5 p.m. the night before. Here are some alternates to entering to just driving yourself through the park. Okay, here's some other ways you can go in. This blows my mind. This blows my mind. If you were just to, for whatever reason, walk into Rocky, still need a timed entry ticket. But if you bike into Rocky on a bicycle, you pedal in, no timed entry ticket. Does that blow your mind? I would feel sorry for those poor bicyclists <laughs> wanting to climb the mountain roads. Yes. <laughs> but you've done it. I've done it. Yeah. Uh, so there's not as many bicyclists, right? No. <laughs> so bicyclists, no timed entry ticket. Yay. And there's plenty of lodging in Estes Park. So if you plan on bringing a bike, that could be a way to go for a last minute entry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Yep. Yeah. Um, but you do need one if you're just walking in. If you have a backcountry wilderness camping permit, your first day to get into the park, no timed entry ticket needed. You need that permit, but that counts mm -hmm. as your, your day in. Your timed entry pass. Your timed entry task for that first day you go in because you're gonna stay there, right? Yeah. Camping itself. So camping includes your timed entry ticket. Now, I need to say camping inside the park is extremely limited any year, but it's even more limited this year because Moraine Park Campground is closed for renovations. Starting this May and going through, they say, early summer of 2024, and I would just plan on it being closed all next summer too. <laughs> uh, so camping permits are what you think. If you've made camping permits in a park before, they go on sale six months before you need them. And I tell you what, February 1st, tickets sold out for August 1st. Um, so they're extremely competitive to get camping inside Rocky. But if you're able to, your reservation for camping counts as your timed entry ticket with this caveat. Check in at your campground is at one o'clock. So your timed entry ticket gets you in the park at one o'clock. <laughs> you can't try yep. to get in the park at nine or 10. It's not gonna work. It only counts that first day for check-in. Uh, check yeah, um, so that's new too. And so also those timed entry tickets, it depends on where you camp. So Aspen Glen, Glacier Basin and Timber Creek, those have access to Bear Lake Corridor, which is awesome. Very Coast sought after. Down. Bear Lake Corridor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Timber Creek Campground is outside of that. So it's just the everywhere else uh, timed entry ticket. Yep. Yeah. So that's new this year too. Uh, the other way is there's shuttle buses. There's actually a shuttle bus once you get into Rocky that dri can drive you all over in there. And that's just the, um, the free in-park shuttle. And there's a bunch of routes for that. So look that up. And that's only mm -hmm. through that high period too, May 27th through October 22nd, and includes the Bear Lake, Lake Route and Moraine Park. Um, so okay. that yeah. area. So that's pretty nice. Yes. Uh, so that's within the park. There's another shuttle bus though, <laughs> and it's called the Hiker Shuttle. I couldn't find information on this last year, but this year they have it very well written out. So the Hiker Shuttle leaves from the town of Estes Park from the visitor center only. It will not pick you up around town. You have to get to the visitor center in Estes Park and it'll take you into, um, there's a lot of places, I'll put this map on the screen. It'll take you all the way to Bear Lake. Uh, you'd need 
a reservation for that though. So essentially you're trading one reservation for the other. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't need a timed entry ticket, but you do need a $2 ticket for that hiker shuttle. So there's $2 that. $2 for the shuttle? It is. Ooh, oh, that's here's a deal. this, you know what else, what else is a deal? It's $2 for four people. Ah. Yeah, so if four of you are going hiking and want to be on the hiker shuttle, that $2 covers you. Here's how you have to get that though. Recreation.gov again. <laughs> and it's they go on sale the 5 p.m. the night before. I didn't see anywhere else that you can get them any further ahead. You have to do it 5 p.m. or later the night before. <laughs> and those um, those fill up to capacity too. Yep. They do not carry bicycles, uh, but some do carry wheelchairs. Look into that if that sounds interesting, because perhaps you're camping or staying in Estes and you do just want to go hike around Bear Lake. That could be the way to go. Uh, you need to have your park pass, so definitely have your overall park pass. But the hiker shuttle will cover that timed entry ticket throughout the day. That's a really cool option. Yes. Yeah. Before I get to the ways around the park pass, there are some other things I want to let you know. First of all, <laughs> major construction at the Fall River entrance. Well, there's one cloud in the sky. <laughs> it's covering up our light source. Anywho, there is major construction at the Fall River entrance here out of Estes Park, and it's going to be down to one lane. This is where it used to be. Ah. So yeah, Beaver Meadows, the other yeah, entrance wanna, from Estes Park. The reason I always go to Fall River is because I could bypass town. You can go up past the Stanley and go down that way. So you're going to have to kind of go through town a little bit to get to the Beaver Meadows. Um, but that will have more open stations to get you in the park. Uh, yeah. Fall River, once it's done, will be fantastic. Uh, be, be aware of that. They say all over the website, there is no guarantee of parking. Uh, so even if you got all those passes and you got in, there may not be parking at Bear Lake. There may not be parking anywhere. Uh, there's parking spots all around Rocky, but they could be full. Yep. And you need to really respect parking in designated spots. Even if you see wildlife, don't go and park up on boulders. Please don't do that. A couple of things. If you're going to go over Trail Ridge Road, that opens approximately the end of May and closes approximately the end of October. Again, completely based on snowfall and weather conditions. Sometimes they'll open it for Memorial Weekend and they have to close it down for a day and then they have to open it and they close it. So the beginning of the season is Iffy. parts of it may be closed. You yeah. may not be able to get all the way over uh, Trail Ridge Road in parts of like June and October. Just a note, if you do plan on coming here when Trail Ridge Road is open, Steve and I have a photographer's guide to Trail Ridge Road, and it is linked down in the description. It is free to you. Uh, that was a lot of fun to plant to do last summer. Yep. Yes, it was. Yeah. Old Fall River Road. That is the one-way, nine-mile paved road that we did a video unpaved on. Road. I'm sorry, unpaved road. Sorry. Uh, and that's really kind of an interesting drive. Uh, but that one has even shorter time frame, approximately first part of July to approximately the first part of October. So pretty short season. But if you get a chance to do that, it's a beautiful drive. It is a beautiful drive. It's very, very different from Trail Ridge Road. You don't want to take your RV over it. Though. Oh. Good point. I think there's a restriction yeah. on, on vehicle size. Yeah, I think so. Oh. It's sketchy. There's some hairpin turns in there. Um, a couple of things just about this area in general. The weather will change dramatically. You'll see that everywhere. <laughs> weather can change in a minute. It could snow any point of the year. Yes, I have been snowed on every month of the year. Yep. In Rocky Mountain. Yep, every month of the year it can um, snow, wind. Uh, they will tell you to watch out for lightning storms in the afternoons during the summer. That's for real. That's a big thing. That's yes. huge, yeah. Uh, so I would say, you know, anytime afternoon, those could come in. Fires can happen anytime. Uh, the last few years, we've had a lot of wildfires. Be careful of that. If you hear a rumor that there might be a fire around here, check all the parks because they could have to close down parts of them. Yeah. If you're here during the snowy time, avalanches can happen. This year we had a lot of snowfall. And if we have wind or as things melt, if you're here early in the season, uh, heed all the avalanche warnings as well. Yeah. Oh, here's our sunshine back. Oh, wow, my eyes. <laughs> One more thing to know is that dogs, pets aren't allowed in most of Rocky. 
So kind of in the parking lots and in your campsite. I think you can have them in your campsite, but they're not allowed on any trails. So if you have a dog, find somewhere to board it in town. It's probably the best option or not bring one. No dogs. Elevation! Oh my gosh! Where are we at Estes Park? 7,000? 6,000? 8,000 plus. We're about 8,000 feet above sea level. Which at is Estes Park. At Estes Park? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then when you're way up in Rocky, it's, it's 11,000. It's two miles. Yeah. Yeah, you're uh, two miles plus. And you will feel out of breath. Uh, you, will, you might get dizzy. You might get altitude sickness. So read up on that and be prepared. And that does not have to do with how fit you are. So if you think you're athletic mm -hmm. or you're thin or whatever, altitude doesn't sickness matter. doesn't care. It's yeah. about your red blood cells and oxygen. <laughs> yeah. uh, so if you start to have any of the symptoms, you need to get to a lower elevation. Yeah. And then it's always great to just get into town like Denver's at mile high and stay a day or S's, stay in S's for a day and then go up in the mountains if you have time. Drink a ton, a ton, a ton of water partly for the elevation and partly because you'll be dehydrated. This is high desert and yeah. I'm so thirsty right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's high desert. Bring sunscreen, bring a double the amount of water you think you'll need. Uh, Tylenol or ibuprofen can help with the really minor symptoms of altitude sickness. Sometimes I just like, I kind of maybe mm. have a little bit of a headache, uh, but really watch out for that. Uh, you might need to bring a snack. So all the way up at the Alpen Visitor Center, they have a gift shop, which is pretty, but very few snacks. Well, they get, I think they got a like little. a hamburger and yeah, there's like hot some dog or something. Hamburger and hot dogs, and there's like some popcorn and chocolate, but there's really not that many snacks. Um, and there's really definitely no healthy snacks. <laughs> uh, so if you have uh, no. any kind of health concerns, bring your own snacks. There's plenty of places and ask us to pack something and bring it up. Uh, Colorado peach in Colorado. <laughs> num num. But snacks will help. Yep. Yeah, and I, I think I already said this, but you'll be out of breath. Sometimes um, I have family and I bring them up here and they're like, I can't believe it. Why do I feel like I'm so out of shape? I said, elevation. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you're at a time where there's snow and you want to sled, there is a one place in Rocky that you can sled. Do you know where it is? Hidden Valley. And you don't sled down ranch, okay? <laughs> Hidden Valley is the only place you can sled in Rocky. You can do some cross-country skiing. You can, I don't know if you can see the tracks here. I talked about limited cell service too. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple spots in there, like near Bear Lake entrance. I got cell service last year. Yep. Psh, I was shocked. But do not count on having cell service and definitely none up at Alpen Visitor Center. None. Do not count on that. So that's like the bare, bare basics you need to know about Rocky. Like layer up, wear lots of water, listen to your body. And really there's no bad day in Rocky. No. We always say that, always say that. So with all that said, now you're prepared. There are ways around the timed entry ticket. <laughs> you ready for this? Okay. You still need to park pass unless you come in those five days. The two free days during the timed entry season, you need timed entry tickets. Yeah. So the but time's not that, quite free. Yeah. So you still need timed entry on the free days. Yeah. Uh, ways around the timed entry tickets. These are great. Go in the off season. <laughs> We're here in mid March and it is gorgeous. There's two more months that's amazing here. You could come the end of October. Now, it's not to say tomorrow we could get a blizzard, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So if you really want to guarantee the weather, I mean, you're never going to get that. There is no guarantee. You're not going to get that, but you're probably not going to be in a severe blizzard in July. <laughs> um, but it's beautiful in the off season. Absolutely amazing in the off season. I don't hike in the snow and everything, but a lot of those trails are open even in the winter. Yep. Yeah, you need special gear though, be careful. You can also go outside of the timed entry ticket time. So for the rest of the park that you have to have the timed entry between nine and two, you can go before 9 a.m. or anytime after 2 p.m. Except be careful of. Don't try and get here just before nine. There will be lines, long lines of cars trying to get in before nine. I've been here 45 minutes before 
I needed a timed entry pass and was not able to get through the line in time to get in. Yeah, so, he had to come home. There's that. Yeah. You know, if you're going to try and get in before, and especially with the Fall River Road uh, closed down, the lines are going to be even longer. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. Yeah. So if you think you want to start sneak in right before nine, don't, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I would get here seven or yeah. before. Now for the Bear Lake Corridor, the 5 a.m. to 6 p.m., you can come in outside of those hours too. Yeah, but and, get here at 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, what, which I know a lot of hikers do because there's yeah. such a long hike. So a lot of you may come up here already at 3 a.m., which is totally fine. You just need your regular park pass. You don't need a timed entry if you come in before 5 or after 6 p.m. Um, so that's nice, too. Yes. Yeah. So that's one way to get around those. Take the hiker shuttle, like I was talking about. Um, do that. Carpool. So whenever I have people in town, we just go in one car. You know, yep. so we managed to get one timed entry ticket and we have the one park pass and that usually does it. <laughs> We're usually mm -hmm. able to get somehow a timed entry ticket. Like we know exactly when to click the button. <laughs> and if your family's here for multiple days at elevation, maybe try every day. If you like start early, if you know you have, you can go up, you know, Friday, Saturday or Sunday, which is the busiest times and you don't get the ticket for Friday, you know, you know what I mean? Am I yeah. making sense? <laughs> the last minute, five o'clock at night tickets yeah. that you can get. Try them every day. Try early. Um, you can go to another place. There's so many nice places just outside, just outside of Rocky that kind of seem like Rocky. <laughs> yeah, all around Estes Park is amazing. There are all kinds of trails in the national forest that surrounds Rocky oh. Park. Yeah. So, now right here at Lily Lake, just across the highway is a uh, Twin Peaks hiking trail. Yeah. So, and that's a, that'll take you up the mountain above uh, Estes Park. Awesome views, mm. awesome. Oh yeah, and there's Lake Estes to look around. Uh, also, if you go along the Peak to Peak Highway, especially in October, oh, absolutely yep. gorgeous. Lots of elk, lots of fall colors, just gorgeous. Yes. Gorgeous drive. So go to another part of the park and you do not need these if you're going on a guided tour. So yeah. you can see those buses, those funky t tour buses. Those are, those include your timed entry ticket. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're on a commercial tour, so maybe you're on a photography tour, something like that. It does not, that the, your tour guide covers that. The, and again, the backcountry wilderness permits, uh, horseback riding trips. There's a couple of barns around here that cover that. That's pretty cool. I would mm -hmm. love to horseback ride. <clears throat> yep. Uh, actually, last September, I did horseback ride in Estes Park, but I, we didn't go into Rocky, and it was gorgeous. I highly recommend. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to my friend Don Wilson with Don Wilson Photography. She gives photo tours in Rocky and actually around the world. She just came back from Peru, I think, and she just wrote a book. I would have it with me, but she just got the box of books. Uh, it is called 100 Things to Do in Estes Park Before You Die. It's mm -hmm. one of those of the series. And I cannot wait to get my hands on this book. Dawn Wilson lives in Estes Park. She's up in Rocky nearly every day. And she's a phenomenal, phenomenal wildlife photographer. And she has that commercial license to give tours. And she will personalize the tour to you. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah. So if you wanted to see somewhere with a sunrise landscape, she'll take you there. If you want to go somewhere that you have a high chance of seeing elk, she'll go there. And Very, she knows the best places to catch just about everything. Yeah, super knowledgeable. So her information will be in, um, in the description as well. Uh, that is the one person I know personally that gives the guided tours in Rocky for photography specifically. So Dawn is fantastic. And once I get my hands on that book, I want to make a video about that too. And I want to try a couple of the things in there. <laughs> See how many we can squeeze in mm -hmm. in a day. That'll be awesome. And one more section is that we're photographers. If you're not familiar with Cattail Chronicles, Steve and I do a lot of videos about wildlife and nature photography, and we're up in Rocky a lot. We mm -hmm. love it up here, absolutely love it. We've done several videos in Rocky. If you are also interested in that, we've done videos on the elk, uh, the big three wildlife, Trail Ridge Road, Fall River Road. If you wanna know what Fall River Road is like before you drive it, watch that video <laughs> because it can feel sketchy if you're not from the mountains. Yeah. 
Uh, so we do a lot of videos on this. And so here's um, some of our advice for photography here in the park. Uh, first of all, obviously grab our free guide for Trail Ridge Road. It covers wildlife and landscape photography opportunities mile by mile along Trail Ridge Road from Essis all the way to Alpine Visitor Center. We put a lot of work into that because we just, we just love it and we wanted to share it with you. If you're trying to decide, do I want to bring gear for wildlife? Do I want to bring gear for landscape? What should they do, Steve? Bring both. Bring both, absolutely. <laughs> um, there's, the, the opportunities for both of them are amazing. And quite frequently, you can actually combine them both. Oh, so yeah. So you'll get wildlife with an awesome background. You're right. You're so. right. I know. And sometimes you'll pull, drive along and there's a pullout for a big enough for like three cars because the vista is just stunning. You just won't yep. believe it. You won't believe it. You'll think you're on a movie set. <laughs> I just, my yes. jaw drops every time I come to Rocky. Like yeah. what? How did I even get here? What kind of wildlife have we seen here, Steve? Well, the big ones. Mm -hmm. Elk, moose, bighorn sheep. Yep. 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 Seen coyotes, foxes. Haven't seen a bear yet. No. But others have. Right? So, yeah. I know, that's one I want to see. I mean, from a safe distance. <laughs> um, uh, hawks, all kinds of birds, all yeah. kinds of birds. Uh, we probably will do a video critters, marmots, on that. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh my God, marmots. Yes, marmots, uh, uh, hummingbirds. They're numerous, numerous hummingbirds. Uh, even in Estes Park, if you just go down to the park in the summer or just like in the town, they're all over. It's yeah. so cool. Everyone plants flowers for them. Yeah, all mm -hmm. kinds of yeah. wildlife and scenery. So really you can't go wrong. <laughs> Even if you have just a cell phone, it will, it'll do wonders. I say plan on spending the full day. Once oh, you're yeah. in the park, it takes some time, unless you're just driving through. As photographers, we stop a lot, <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> it takes us hours. We usually hire a dog sitter because uh, we're here all day. So once you're in the park, mm -hmm. truly enjoy it. Stop at every pullout. Be a tourist, you know, yeah. take a picture of every elk you see. It's fine as long as you're in a safe spot to park and you're a safe distance from them and you're treating them respectfully. Be a tourist. Yeah, take time to enjoy the sights. Oh my gosh. Smell the roses, they say, although <laughs> yeah. there's not many roses up here. But there's tons and tons and tons of stuff to photograph. Uh, I think Steve's getting a little itchy right now. Like, he's got his camera mm -hmm. and, like, we got to go get some pictures. <laughs> it's just, it's an incredibly gorgeous day. Yes, it is. I'm so excited for this. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you all to be able to visit Rocky Mountain National Park. I hope all of this information has been helpful for you and sorted out all of your questions. A lot of this you can find at the Rocky Mountain National Park website that's in the description and recreation.gov for all, all of the like camping, hiker shuttle and timed entry tickets. The information's on those two sites. So just have those bookmarked or bookmark this particular video so you can come back to it to plan your trip. Yes, and if it's useful, subscribe, yes. hit that like button. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, we love doing this and we love uh, helping you. And if you have questions, uh, really typey type them in the comments and I answer every single comment. Yeah, we're excited. If you see us in the park, please say hi. That yep. did happen to us in this last year. Someone said, hey, I, know, I recognize you from YouTube. So absolutely come say hi to us if you see us. We're here a lot, especially in the summer, as much as we possibly can be. It's, mm -hmm. it's magnetic. This place is just amazing. Yes. <sighs> yeah. All right. I think that's all we have to say. Anything that's, you want to add? Nope. That's a lot. I know. I feel like I talked a lot. So, yeah, the rules are pretty simple. It's There's just lots of them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. So rewatch this video. Go to the websites. You'll be set. Once you figure it out, it's really not as complicated as you think it will be. Yep. All right. Yes. Okay. Let's uh, let's go see what we can see, Steve. Yes. All right. Let's go. My Thanks favorite. for watching. See you in the next one. Yep. Bye. Bye.